Alright guys, welcome back to All Things Outdoors. And also, please be sure to like this video, to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And be sure to put that down in the comments below saying that you did that for a shout out. And without further ado, let's get started. So today, we're out here at the, um, we're out here in the woods. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to process a large tree stump and turn it from this, probably 10 foot long tree stump, of fatwood into the kindling sticks that we saw in our other fatwood video. So yeah, um, without, further, without further ado, let's get started. So um, what we're gonna do is soon I'm gonna have to put it on the tripod. But anyway, we're gonna first tell you what we're gonna do for the first step. So the first couple steps are to uh, remove any pieces that are already kind of like able to be broken off. So for example, like this. If it's hanging off, you can most likely break it off and if you can't, then you'll just have to cut it off. Um, with this, what you wanna do is you wanna break off as many pieces as you can before you start to cut the fatwood. Because if you can break a piece off, then that means it's one less, if you break one piece off, that means you, have, you don't have to cut that piece. At least you don't have to cut it off the tree. Something like that. So this overall makes it a lot easier to process the fatwood. So, um, yeah, now that we've broken off as many pieces as we can, because overall this thing is not really rotten at all, um, it's very strong still, so, um, that's about as much of it that I could break off, but now what we're going to want to do is, and for this I'll have to set up the tripod, we're going to cut it into sections, so we'll show you how we do that once I get the tripod set up, and I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. Alright, so we've got our, uh, things set up we got the tripod set up and now i'm going to cut a section off and then we'll do a time lapse of me cutting up into sections and before we cut just want to say same equipment as we usually have baco ergo force also i got a new blade protector for it um yeah baco ergo force 30 inch version and it's got the dry wood blade First, we're going to want to cut it off kind of where our easiest area is. So we're going to cut it in half. This will make the whole stump itself easier to manage when we move it around to continue cutting. So now it's starting to pinch. Then what I do is I see if I can break it and it will not break. So then what I would do is I will flip uh, it over. It's quite heavy. Yeah, so I'm gonna flip it over so that we can then continue cutting on the other side. And this will make it much easier to work with. to get it lined up with the other cut. It's pretty lined up. Perfect. So now that we've cut through it, show you how rich it is it's pretty rich fatwood here look at that it's very good fatwood there now i'm gonna do a time lapse of me cutting the rest of it up so yeah and also before we do get our time lapse set up what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to cut the sections you're gonna want to cut this fatwood stump up into about uh i would say probably about foot long sections so that'd be right around where my thumb is. Hopefully you can see. Should be able to. About five, no, not five inch. About uh, one foot long sections. That'll make it much easier to split and that'll be a great length for kindling. So yeah, now um, let's, get, let's get started. I'm gonna um, start the time lapse.
and sometimes you'll get an even cut so and if you get an even cut and you don't want it you can just cut that section off um you don't have to but you know it doesn't really matter but anyway what i am going to do is i'm going to cut this uneven part off because it makes it harder to split and then i'm going to cut one really large section here one like pretty thick one so that because because it is different when you're processing a bigger piece so we're gonna pro so we're gonna do that for you so you can see uh how to do it with a really big piece so yeah i'm gonna put the thing put the camera back in the tripod well first i'm gonna cut this then i'm gonna put the camera back in the tripod and then um we will show you how to split it i'm not gonna do the rest today because it's too big for now but i will do it um some other time so yeah um I'm gonna cut that and then we will bring you back when i'm done all right so got the tripod set up we're gonna process a couple of these pieces of fat wood for you guys um i'm just gonna get a uh, stick so that i can use it for batani and then we'll get started all right so we got everything ready um before i get started i want to show you this i found this really cool piece of fat wood got a couple of them Let's get them real quick and they have a pitch pot and they have a resin pocket in there um, and also we got the tripod set up, so yeah, we're going to split some. But look at that. Just wanted to show you that. I thought that was pretty cool. And it's really rich. Now, that the resin pocket's basically just an area of wood that contains more sap than the rest of it. So not like the whole, like even in fat wood, like it's basically just an area with a lot of resin. And it's not just like in the wood. It's like you can see it. And you can see all the crystals on there. It's like crystallized almost. That's not um, in the wood. That's just crystal. That's just the sap itself. That's not wood. Now, it's a very thin layer. That's why you can see through it. But I thought that was pretty cool and I would show you. And anyway, I'm going to show you how to process a small section like this one right here. And then we'll show you how to process a big section like this one right here. So, yeah, let's get started. Tools that we're going to be using machete. Same one. Um, yeah, so got our wood and we got our machete. And here's a small section. So basically what I do is I take the machete like this and then I would split it, whoops, split it in half. Perfect. And as you can see, and then you basically just split those sections that you just cut, the pieces that I just split. I would cut, keep cutting those, then you just keep cutting them until you get them to the size that you want them. So like this, these are still too big. So we're just gonna split them in half again. Whoa, that was crazy. <laughs> anyway, we can still split this piece because you can still use it, it's just a little bit shorter. Maybe I can use it for the wood stove or something. Perfect. And this one. And then we'll cut it one more time. And then it'll be good. There we go. We got this section, just the last section of that small section. Perfect. So you've got it. It's good to go. Now we're going to show you how to process a bigger section. So sometimes when you're cutting it, it will crack. You can just break off those pieces that crack. Oh, and look at that actually. So the reason why that cracked so easily, because this is a, another resin pocket. You can probably see it in there, how it's all crystallized. Pretty cool. Anyway, we, we would just treat this like a, uh, like a small section. Cut it in half. And keep cutting it in half until you get it to the size that you want it. And since this is a very small section, it only needed two splits. Now, with the bigger piece, you can do as any other pieces need to be peeled off, like this one here. Peel it off and split it. Since it's very small, it'll probably only need to be split once or twice. Yeah, only once. Actually, no, it does need twice. That's okay, though. It's not that bad. Perfect. And as you can see, now we got two very nice sized pieces of fat wood. And now we will cut it 
cut our big section, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cut it in half first. And it may be quite hard. Luckily, that one split pretty easily, but sometimes they're very hard to split, and you just kind of, kind of, kind of got to keep cutting. Obviously, it's easier with like an axe or something. I would not recommend this doing this with a wedge at all. Do not do it with a wedge. It's very hard. I've already, I've tried before. It's not easy at all. And then, once you get it into small enough sections, you can just cut the sections in half and just treat them like the smaller sections, like this. And then you cut them again. It's a very good fat, but it's very rich. It's got a lot of sap in it. And the chemicals that are in this, the reason why it's colored the way it is, is because it's got these chemicals called terpenes in it. And I believe it's actually, there are terpenes in uh, turpentine. I believe that that's what gives it turpentine its taste. Not that I drink it, because um, I don't. But anyway, um, as you can see, pretty good pieces so far. And you always want to be very careful with the machete. I've seen a lot of videos of people using machetes and other tools like axes and like this that very in very in very dangerous ways. So don't do that. That's how you lose a finger. Or even worse, whole legs and limbs and arms and stuff. It's not good. You gotta be very careful. And this is very rich. So you can see this piece has a little mini pitch pocket in it. You can just see how dark in color it is. It's basically like a golden color, kind of an orange golden color. That means it is very, very good fatwood. You don't get fatwood that's golden all the time. But obviously the red fatwood is the best. It does not get much better than red fatwood. Sometimes I've, I've found one piece of fatwood that was so dark it was like almost like purple. It's like a burgundy color. And I, that's the darkest piece of fatwood I've ever seen. I didn't even know it could get that dark. Didn't even know it could get that rich. And like, it was so full of resin. Like when I cut it with the saw, like the, the saw was covered in like, like, like sap because the sawdust was so full of resin that it like stuck together. And it like gunked up my saw. I had to uh, clean off the blade. It's not easy to do. It's like trying to get rid of pine sap, but much stickier. Then I found out that I, if I just cut through a different type of wood, like oak or something else like that, something very hard wood, hickory, beech, uh, it just cuts, as you cut through the wood, the hardwood, it just kind of like rubs the sap off as you go. By the time you cut through a good sized log, it's already done. It's nice and clean. And here, as you can see, we're just using the same method as we've been doing with the smaller sections. And we've gotten it. It's very easy to learn how to do this. And it's, it doesn't take a whole lot of time. Like, I split a whole lot of it. And it only took me, like, 12 minutes, actually, to cut the whole pile. And I'll show you it in a minute. So I'm finished with this last piece. Actually, there's one more that needs to be split. That's this piece here. It's got a very tight grain. That's cool. Perfect. So... It fell down the hill. That's okay. Anyway, um, as you can see, look at this. Split all this in seven minutes, and all this in 12 minutes. So 12 plus seven is 15 minutes. 15 minutes for all of this fatwood. That is a huge amount of fatwood for not that much time. So definitely a great way to get fatwood, a great way to spend time in the outdoors and also kind of help you prepare for winter. I know for a lot of you guys, it is time to collect firewood. So yeah, um, this will hopefully help you guys. And also, and that's gonna be about all for today's video. So once again, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And be sure to put that down in the comments below saying that you did that first shout out. And we will see you guys on the next adventure. Just look how nice it is today. It's quite cloudy and a little, and quite breezy, but it is, other than that, a really nice day. It's wonderful. Look at that. 
yeah, we will see you guys on the next adventure.